Welcome to Rational Alchemy. Today we have a very, very special guest from here in Longmont, Eric Hosempa. Eric is here to talk about the Longmont Community Foundation. Eric, welcome to Rational Alchemy. Thank you so much for allowing and, me to be here. And, and why, don't, why, don't, why don't you just get st straight into the meat of it. What is the foundation? Yeah, so the foundation was established in the late 80s. We actually came about because a group of concerned citizens wanted to help actually the theater, um, the Longmont Theater at the time, and also with the library, um, the construction that was going on at the time. So they started what was a, a fund, if you will, and it was a capital fund, and they asked for donations. and. And that kind of fizzled out over time, and then in the early 90s, uh, a larger foundation in Denver, the Betcher Foundation, decided to issue a challenge to Northern Colorado and said, hey, why don't we create a Northern Colorado Community Foundation consisting of the communities of Loveland, Greeley, Fort Collins, and Longmont. And as you can imagine, that worked for a time, but, but also those communities are so different that it was difficult to say, hey, you know, what goes on in Fort Collins really is the same that happens in Longmont. So. We left that and um, went under the auspices of another foundation, the Denver Foundation, and we were there for um, 12 years. And we left and became our own foundation in 2014. And, and actually, ever since really our formation, we have had three pillars, if you will. And the three pillars of the Longmont Community Foundation are three things that we, we primarily do. Are the first one is, is we have an endowment, mm -hmm. uh, a savings account, if you will, for the, for the Longmont area and the St. Vrain Valley. And this, um, this endowment or the savings account, we actually have a group of volunteers, about 17 members each year that review proposals that we get from nonprofits around the region that uh, they review and look at those written proposals. They go out and meet the organizations and visit with them and, and do a little bit of vetting. They come back collectively and report their findings and give a grade, if you will. And then it all kind of accumulates or culminates in a, in a, uh, a grants breakfast we have in April. Uh -huh. So we give out those monies from that savings account. And then in addition to that, we, our second pillar is we have what's called donor advised funds or donor directed funds. Those are individuals, families, um, businesses that have their own fund with the foundation. So underneath our umbrella, those funds are invested. Um, individuals get a charitable deduction for that. And then they also get a advisory role in the monies that sit with us and are invested and gain over time. So they can support any of the causes that they like. Um, they can support their church, they can support their school, they can support a university, they can support basic needs programs, really they can support just about anything that has a charitable purpose and improves the community. Excellent. And um, on top of that we also have scholarship funds, um, we do scholarship funds and then we also have, um, uh, we're a, a home for agency endowments. So some of the nonprofits in town in our community actually invest with our investment pool and that's a way for them to have rainy day money, so to speak. The third pillar um, is we're here for nonprofits. I've been in the nonprofit sector for 26 years. And for me, I've found it really intriguing. I, I love to talk about fundraising, that's crazy. But um, I absolutely love to talk about fundraising, professional development, board development. So we offer free trainings throughout the year to nonprofit organizations on those topics, uh, amongst other ones too, regarding email marketing, social media, tools and that sort of thing for free. And, um, but uh, it's, it's just really fascinating the fact that we get to help so many people, either from the donor side or the nonprofit side, really kind of attain their goals and dreams, so to speak. I, I don't think people realize how difficult it is to raise money uh, nowadays, especially since we had the big financial crash. Um, I used to do a radio show up in Fort Collins with mm -hmm. KRFC 88.9. Mm -hmm. They're a community radio station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, being a radio station, you have got quite a large, heavy overhead to run a station like that. Um, and, you know, fundraising was a difficult thing because you don't want to do too much, but on the other hand, you cannot afford to do too little. 
Yeah, it's I a very fine balance. Agreed, and actually, I used to work for public television, and I am responsible for littering uh, the, the entire world with 300,000 pieces of mail a year when I was the membership director at Rocky Mountain PBS. We'll talk about this in a minute. <laughs> 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 but you know you're you're correct in the sense that the the costs are extremely high to run a, especially a public television station because you're dealing with camera time and other things that are extremely expensive probably yes. even more expensive than radio oh absolutely and um, so it was it was one of the things that you know, we had to raise money for but I will suggest too that there's also an advantage that you can go on air and yes. raise money where a lot of other nonprofits don't have that tool to use that that is correct yeah. That is correct. Um, we used to do fun drives every year, and I always used to come in and I would do an afternoon show. I was always a late night disc mm -hmm, jockey. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why they wanted to put me on so late at night, but that's what they that, did. Because of that voice. It's probably that, 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 voice. Dread, that dreadful yes. British accent, old boy. <laughs> and um, yeah, we used to come in, and, and it was interesting. We used to get up to you know lots of things. I was doing it one year with Suzanne, a very good friend of mine, and uh, she said, okay, she said, if you send me X number of dollars over the course of our show, which was an hour long, I'll cut all my hair off. And we raised all the money and she oh cut all her gosh. hair off. Oh my gosh. And we posted the photographs on the website. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I refused to join her and then I used to have long hair. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's get back to the, po yes, the, yes, the yes. point here. So, <laughs> live and give Longmont. Giving yeah. Day is coming up, and I believe there are 22 yeah. um, projects that you want exactly. to work on here. The agency endowments that I spoke of earlier are all participating in what we call Live and Give Longmont Day, which is September 26th. And what we're really doing is encouraging the community to come, day, come, come together for one day of giving, where we want them to donate to the specific projects that each of these agencies have put up on our website. Mm -hmm. So it's longmontfoundation.org. And just click on the Live and Give Longmont tab, and that's where you can find the pro the projects. And you'll and find the what sort of projects are we talking about? Oh, give give us a bit of an overview. Of <clears throat> yeah, the projects. I mean it really spans it spans a wide range, but uh, probably one of the most ambitious ambitious projects we have right now is from the in between. Mm -hmm. They're actually looking to build a small housing project on the corner of Ninth and Francis using okay. a church right there. Yeah. And they've, they've got about a quarter of uh, an acre or half an acre of land that they'll be building these kind of small homes. They're not tiny homes technically, but they'll be small occupancy homes. Mm -hmm. and for them, that's a way to address affordable housing in a kind of a small microcosm. And it's a really neat partnership between the church and the in-between. They're actually looking to raise $45,000. <clears> We're not... We, I want to be clear too, we're not guaranteeing that we're going to raise all this money. We're looking to at least seed it, but we'd certainly love participation from the community in yes. some of these things. Um, goes all the way from that high end to Habitat for Humanity is looking for people to fund a, a build day, and that's $2,000. And we've got some other ones, um, such as the Hour Center for their, for their basic needs program. We have arts programs um, like um, Firehouse Arts is looking to uh, provide art for those with deve developmental disabilities. So that's a program that they continue to do. They would like to continue doing that. Uh, so this is just one way that people can give to that specific program. So if arts is your thing, that's maybe something you consider. If you know, affordable housing is your thing, maybe it's the in-between. I mean, there's just a, a pretty cool assortment of different okay. nonprofits. I know a lot of people <clears throat> would love to give, but they just don't have the money at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Can they can they give their time to any of these projects? You know, uh, they certainly could look at giving their time. Um, we are not uh, in a position really to be a volunteer management no, no, no. facilitation they'll, they'll be group because much. that would be just difficult for us to do that. Yes. Um, be, I used to run a volunteer center long ago in Denver and it requires a lot of hours, a lot of management. And we already have a, a volunteer center for the region which is the volunteer connection. So mm -hmm. we didn't want to compete with that and we also encourage people to contact the agencies directly if they're interested in volunteering because right. they're going to know a lot more about volunteering than we are. Yeah, especially yeah. people like humanities because they're, they're, exactly. they're doing it all of the time. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes. And the Hour Center always needs volunteers. And it, that was one of the difficulties is, is that the Hour Center needs volunteers just about all the time. And then you have other organizations such as the In-Between where they need volunteers, but it's kind of episodic. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, they don't need 200 volunteers because of those 200 volunteers descended on them. They'd be hard-pressed to make sure that yes. they were doing something. So. Yes. Yeah. That's always difficult when you get too many 
volunteers. Exactly, and you, you don't want to you don't want to upset people and say, "Hey, we That's were right. looking for volunteers." So that was the thing we were concerned about: is if we would have thrown that out and said, "Hey, we're looking for volunteers to mm -hmm. to join in on this day," and then somebody gets disappointed because they're not called or they're not yes. involved, that would be just just not a good thing for anybody. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that from my theatre days because uh, nothing was worse because that was again totally voluntary. Yeah. yeah. Nothing's worse than sitting there in the auditorium waiting for the director to get round to your scene that you want to rehearse. Oh yes. And you sit there and <laughs> yes, you sit there exactly, and you sit there. Exactly. Yes. And you got Mike O'Shea's that was calling you. It was calling to go for, you, yeah, a beer. for a pint. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned the theater, and I wanted to point out that that's one of the projects that's on our website too, as well for Live and Give Longmont Day. Mm -hmm. And they're actually looking for a new sound system, so they actually put up this really cool video, and it's really without sound, and they're using placards to, to kind of make that appeal, if you will. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's funny. Tell me about the St. Vrain Scholarship Fund. Yeah, so we have launched uh, Ascend St. Vrain, which is a, a scholarship which we have an overall goal of a million dollars. We're not expecting to raise that in you know the first year or two days, but what we would really like to do is to raise that incrementally, incrementally over time. And our first goal this year is $100,000. And we're actually approaching that very uh, well. We just got a challenge just last week for $20,000. So a, uh, a donor has said, an, uh, an anonymous donor said, I'll give you $20,000 if you can raise $20,000 by December 31st. And that will cap our first goal of $100,000, wow. which is pretty amazing. Nice. And specifically, this scholarship is a little different and unique in the sense that it's not for just four-year institutions. It's not um, two-year institutions, though it can be. It's also for trade schools, vocational schools, and really targets lower middle income students. Mm -hmm. So if you think about scholarships of themselves, and a lot of people that I've spoken to have had the same experience that, um, you know, if you look at scholarships for kids coming out of high school, if your kid is extremely talented, intellectually um, gifted, and does really well in school, generally speaking, they'll probably get some financial aid. aid that is. Um, if they are in financial need, they will get some Pell Grants, perhaps they'll get some financial aid that way as well, maybe from some other scholarships that are based on needs and um, maybe some other financial assistance if they're first time in college ever and mm -hmm. the university will provide that. The thing that's different about Ascend St. Frank is we're really targeting the lower middle income students, those ones just above Pell, el Pell eligibility that just re there really are no resources. So if you don't fit into that, you're really you're really intelligent or extremely financial needy. That's there's just a, a little bit of bandwidth there that that right. those families just can't afford really what they're what they're um, expected to pay for school. And then the other thing too is is that we we also re recognize the fact that not everybody will want to go to a four-year institution mm -hmm. and really shouldn't. I mean, if they don't want to learn about arts, or in my case, philosophy was my degree, <laughs> go see you, uh, then um, they don't have to. They can, you know, I would dare say that a plumber or electrician can make a heck of a lot more money than a nonprofit director. So, right. And not to disparage nonprofit directors like myself, but, you know, there are a lot of trades that actually could do a lot of, a lot of money. Yes. A lot of money, yeah. And give you a nice income. For exactly. Them. So that's almost guaranteed for Oh, life. absolutely. And there is going to be, you know, those people are going to need renovations of their homes. There's going to be, um, I think it's going to be work for a long time. Right. Um, it's going to assure probably a great deal of income for some of those people. Yes. It's something that I don't expect to be automated in the near future. There mm -hmm. are certain other jo jobs that will be automated, I guess, but um, that's probably one that I would say would remain roughly the same. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about before I rant about what's <laughs> hiding in this, this yellow it's like envelope? A secret envelope. No, I think, um, you know, I, I want to just one, make one more point about Ascend St. Brain is the fact that, you know, I, I think I might have said this, but I just want to be clear about this, that the fact is, is that it is a renewable scholarship. Mm -hmm. That's another kind of um, area where we see a need, where there's a lot of scholarships for new freshmen but there's no renewable scholarship. I mean, there's very, there are renewable scholarships, but yes. there's very few. So we just yes. wanted to make sure that that point was made too. Yes. So okay, let's go like to the envelope, to, the magic envelope. I, I, I'm gonna be interested in how you react to this. No, this, no, no. This, this arrived literally two days ago. 
and I knew I was going to be doing this show with yeah. Eric, and I thought this would be interesting to bring, because this is how not to get money out of Nigel <laughs> at all. <laughs> and this is asking for money. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm just going to read the, 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 the letter here. Yeah, but you got stickers, though. Yeah. Hmm. You could be a dream catcher. The Sioux believe good dreams and nightmares float in the air, and a special willow frame strung with sinew can create out of nightmares and let only good dreams pass through the center hole. And this goes on and on and on, and it's actually, they're asking for money to support Native American schools, which I strongly, strongly believe in. But did I really need expensive printed mm -hmm. stickers? Look at these. Yeah. Those are pretty. Purple. Oh. Card. This all come in one? This is all, this is in all this one? envelope. Wow. Greetings Holy cards. Cow. More stickers. <laughs> now how much will you pay? How much <laughs> did this cost them to put together? And 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 it doesn't matter if the answer is only a dollar, which I don't believe. I think this may have cost a little bit more than a dollar. And how many thousands of these did they send out? Couldn't they have just sent what I originally held up, wherever it's gone, the letter, explaining the issues with Native American schools and how I can help? I didn't need all of this. It's a waste of paper. It's a waste of everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you have got this much money to waste sending things like this, you ain't getting a penny from me. Wow. Eric, now, do you, I, am I, I to, wrong? Am I wrong? Well, this one is extreme. This is actually this probably is the extreme. most extreme example. And I will say I'm guilty of sending incentives, if you will. We, mm -hmm. When I was on public television, we didn't send stamps or stickers. We would send, we would maybe send a Rocky Mount PBS sticker. If you became a member, we would send right. you a sticker and a welcome letter. And that was it. Yes. Unless, of course, there's a pledge drive and you get a DVD or whatever else. But... For our yeah, mailings, for, for it was a, for not... A for $120. You mean, yeah, you, of you, course. You yeah. spent your $120 knowing you're going to get the you're DVD, get the DVD of, yes. of Masterpiece yes. Theatre or something. Exactly. But this is actually probably the most extreme I've ever it's seen. Amazing. Usually I'll see stickers or, or maybe a postcard or a gift card, but this is like the whole kit and caboodle. This is everything. And I, um, and I agree with you saying that, yes, it's a lot of waste, if you will, I will say that the organizations, unless this is uh, some clear-cut mistake, will probably will still make money on it. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing that was always surprising to me is that we could um, send out things to um, individuals who, for renewals, we could give them a yes. you know like a sticker to renew their membership, and it's a lot easier to get somebody to renew. Right than it is to get a new person to join, and I suspect you're, this is probably a new or you're a prospect. So I've, never, thought, I've never heard from never these supported people, them. never heard yeah. from them so they, in the past. They got, you, they got you a list from somewhere, and so they decided to throw the kitchen sink at you, so to speak, mm -hmm. in hopes that you would do. But I will tell you that prospecting like this loses money. Yes. But the reason that they do it is the fact that as much as it loses money, if they can get just a tiny fraction of a percent, which is like less than 0.5 percent mm -hmm. to actually bite, then it makes it worthwhile because mm -hmm. the yeah. lifetime of those gifts, that person will renew. You know, once you get them, typically they'll renew. Hopefully they don't have to send out this much stuff. But typically over the lifetime, it'll actually gain money. Yeah. You know, if, if they had said in their letter, you know, send us 50 bucks and we'll send you the dream yes, catcher, yes. we'll send you the little calendar, we'll send you a few happy birthday cards, maybe some stickers, yeah. then I, that's the PBS way of doing it. Exactly, yeah. And, and you can then sit back and say, okay, I'm going to send you 50 bucks, but you know what, I'm going to take the that box stuff. that says, yeah. that I don't want that stuff. Keep the yeah. money. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, I love live, people like you at PBS. And I, and I, I you know... Oh, we're a great supporter of PBS. Yeah, so, okay. you know. yeah. um, but you know, this just astonished me when this th big, thick envelope. That is amazing. It, it, I've never it, seen it, anything it, like this amazing. in my life. Anyway, Eric. Crazy. Thank you very much for you joining me on welcome. Rational Alchemy. It's been a pleasure having you on board. Thank you so much. Thank you so it. much. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in Rational Alchemy. I'm Nigel Aves, your host, signing off. Thank you. <laughs>